story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good morning, welcome to Core TV News on the R. I am Geft Ogete. President Goodluck Jonathan has assured military personnel of government's commitment to improving their welfare. He also revealed that the government will soon come up with a program to honor fallen military personnel. The president made the promise while addressing graduating military cadets during their combined passing out parade from the Nigerian Defense Academy. He commended the NDA for churning out highly disciplined military officers, but also charged the newly commissioned officers to exhibit high sense of professionalism in the course of their military career. A total of 104 cadets and another 213 short service army cadets were commissioned as officers. 20 of the new officers were cadets from Liberia and the Central African Republic. In a related issue, the federal government is contemplating the establishment of new special brigade forces in addition to the existing forces under the Nigerian Armed Forces. President Jonathan says this was needed to combat new security challenges in the country. The president spoke on Saturday at a press briefing at the passing out parade of Officer Kadat of the 61 Regular Course and Short Service Course 42 at the Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna. He ordered that the establishment of the new special forces was to enable the nation's army to be more alive to its responsibility of protecting Nigerian citizens. Adeboye Basajo, who was injured in a Boko Haram ambush in Michika, Adama State on Monday, met his father, former President Ulishigo Basajo, on Saturday in Jos. Adeboye, who is the Commissioner 135 Field Engineering Regiment of the Nigerian Army in the Plateau State Capital, arrived at Wasse Close Jos residence of the former president around 6.15 after he was discharged earlier in the day from the military reference hospital in Kaduna. Details of their discussion could not be ascertained as the two met behind closed doors with some military chiefs. The Plateau Deputy Governor, STF Commander Joss, David Inetie, and Gwangwon Joss, Guyang Buba, Ubasanjo, and his recuperating son came out of the meeting at about 7 9 p.m. Both left the residence of the former president in the same vehicle. A Lagos based lawyer, Tunde Kolawole, has commended former Nigeria's president, Lisha Gobasanjo, for the orientation and upbringing given to his children. The legal practitioner, who was a guest analyst on a Saturday edition of our flagship program, Core Digest, was ple uh, pleased with the exemplary conduct of Adebo Yobasanjo, son of the former president who sustained gunshot injuries in the battle with Boko Haram in Michika on Monday. Kalawole advised the influential Nigerians to learn from the example displayed by the Obasanjo's family. If we are afraid of, uh, for our own skin, if we are afraid that uh, uh, our own relations, our own bloods are being affected, and then we must always protect, provide special uh, treatment for them, special opportunities and all that, then we won't be alive to our responsibilities as a leadership. Yeah. Leadership is all about sacrifice, it's all about showing good examples. So I think General Joe Gobasanjo is showing very, very good example, not just in allowing his own children or one of his own children to serve in them, but also insisting that he should be subjected to the ordinary medical opportunities that we do have in this uh, part of the world. He has all the resources to fly the man abroad uh, to, to give him whatever the best treatment that could ever happen. Yeah. But he has chosen not to do I think that is a very good uh, 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 behavior also to say on his own part. But let me also say this. 
This is not the first time Obasanjo is going to be showing some good gestures. Uh, I must condemn him for that. I, he, look at what happened between himself and Yabo Obasanjo. I don't know whether you read that explosive exchange, especially the letter that Yabo Obasanjo published in the paper. Mm. When Yabo Obasanjo got admission, I think for his postgraduate studies uh, in an American university and some of his other brothers and say another, the man said, look, I will pay only your tuition fee. Your feeding and boarding and accommodations and all that, you will have to work for it and then uh, be able to meet those challenges. It's not as if the old man doesn't have the resources to really power that, but I suspect that he doesn't want to power his children. He believes in the dignity of labor. Mm. He wants the children to also know what it feels to be hard work. Also, when you look at the exchange between Yabo Basanjo and his father and all that, you could see that the ramblings of Yabo Basanjo is all about saying, here we have a father who was a president. Here we have a father who has been a former head of state. Yabo Basanjo would rather want to see his father, including his elder brother, the medical doctor, giving uh, all blocks to them and giving them opportunity, which he never gave to them. Because of that, Yabo Basanjo, from that letter, when you read in between the lines of that letter, he, she became so bitter. And also the house his father gave him to just stay. When he was a senator, he appropriated it and then gave it out, lease out the house to, to, to somebody else. When he is not the only daughter or when he's not the only child. And That's when right. the man had not given him the property as, as mm -hmm. a gift. So what I'm drawing out of this is that yeah, I think uh, it's a character trait of a person just to really, not to pamper his children, to really let them fend for themselves, to really be street wise so that they could be better citizens and better uh, uh, children. Nigeria's army authorities have decorated some of the officers and men that were injured during the ongoing war against insurgents. They also insisted that Boko Haram members are not better equipped than government troops. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Kenneth was at the head of the army team that visited the injured soldiers at the army's resident hospital in Kaduna. 170 soldiers were on admission, but only three officers and 57 soldiers are still receiving treatment. Do they have ship? Do they have aircraft? Do they have helicopters? Do they have, even what they have are those things that were stolen. So they cannot be more sophisticated. They don't have more sophisticated. So why, why can't you? When you were able to capture prisoners that they become prisoners of war, if you don't capture them, if they are killed in action, then you don't have any prisoners of war. The National Hospital has handed over donations it received on behalf of the Nyanya bomb victims to them. 3.6 million naira was distributed to 30 survivors of the two bomb attacks that were treated at the hospital. The hospital management had earlier handed over 2 million naira to some of the bomb victims. The report. These are some of the victims of two recent bomb attacks in Nyanya, a suburb of the federal capital territory. Until now, they had been getting material assistance from individuals while undergoing treatment at the National Hospital. But today, the hospital management is disbursing 3.6 million naira received on behalf of the bomb victims from individuals and groups. 54 victims were brought to the hospital for treatment, but 30 are benefiting, while others have had their share before now. The list of those uh, who made uh, uh, donations uh, Number one, the all progressive governor's forum, Senator Smart Adeyemi, Chairman, Senate Committee on the Federal Capital Territory, Nigerian Environment Taos Society, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Cherubim and Seraphim Church, the Supreme Bible Club, academic staff of Staff Union of Nigeria. Now it is time for the victims to receive their donations, and one after the other, they filed out. Those who donated for the bonded victims will give you the certain donation. Thank you. Some of the donors. Some of the victims told Court TV News that several months after the bombings, the memory is still fresh in their minds. The, the, the child when the doctor went on strike, so they leave us there. So and in our world, I'm the only person that remains there. So we stay up to one month and two weeks. Yes, my mother she tired, and she said that she want to go home. Before then there was uh, iron on my leg. 
because my leg break two places. So the doctor now came, he asked for the history, we now tell him that, that they said that the result is not out, that he should go there and view it today. So when he went there and he viewed it today, he saw the leg, he said the leg is not okay, that they should put POP on, for the leg. So they now put the POP, so he now discharged us. I live for Nyanya, but I just go meet my sister for central yoga here. I enter Moto I go see my sister. My sister will come and say, I go see and begin nowhere. I said to her, I don't go out today. My, my auntie no day for house. I said to her, I try enter Moto, go see my sister. The begin nowhere. I just enter Moto, I enter the machine, come and come drop for Nyanya. I said, I enter Moto. My mother can't tell me, say, no enter my to Kai, the thing, my mother can't tell me like this. Ah, before I know, say, ma, put my lamp for inside my to The thing can't affect me, enter my body. Can me go one place, I know the time. Ah, I see myself for God. One day I say, hi, hey, God, thank God for my life. Johanna is one of the survivors of the April 14 bombing. He has spent five months at the hospital, but still needs a bone surgery to make him walk again. Since this incident happened on the 14th, I've been in the hospital up to now. Yesterday they discharged me. Uh, with the money they give me now, I want to use because me now, as you see now, for my leg, I still have the problem with my leg now. I have to go for the bone surgery. Why they put me this casting? There's a gap between bone for my leg. So I have to go for the bo uh, bone surgery. These bomb victims concede that they are lucky to be alive having survived bombing that killed more than 80 people. They also hope that the donations will help them fully get back on their feet again. We'll take a break. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes, and bleeding from the eyes, ears, and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces, or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees, or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. The National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Maimala Buni, has urged the Independent National Electric Commission to build on its success in the recent Oshun governorship election for 2015 general polls. Buni, who made the call in Damatu, the Yobe State Capital, says the commission had laid good foundation which could be improved on for future elections. He ordered that the commission seems to have a rising image and it will be a gross disservice for Reinach to allow anyone, any group, or political party to jeopardize its growing profile. Buna insisted that as an electoral body, INEC must be totally independent, fair and objective in executing its responsibilities to any candidate, party, individual, group or official. He called on political parties and politicians to support the commission in the conduct of free and acceptable elections in 2015. The Nigerian Bar Association has ordered a probe into the show of shame involving APC and PDP consuls at the ongoing inspection of election materials used for the August 9 governorship election in Oshun State. The lawyers had engaged in war of words and fought twice at the venue of the exercise. Rashid Rashid reports that though the lawyers have sheathed their swords and are ready to work according to the dictates of the profession, the embarrassment left by the ugly incident remains a source of concern for the NBA. The report. The show of shame started as the election petition tribunal granted leave to the PDP and the APC on the 27th of August to inspect the election materials used during the governorship poll. A lawyer that knows his onion 
There was, however, no lesson learned from the previous day's disgraceful conduct as the lawyers again threw caution to the wind and engaged in physical fight. You can only arrest you. Can never. So, you need to arrest me. Ah, no, then you are. With the Nigerian Bar Association Act by this development and threatening to dangle the axe on those found culpable in the embarrassing fracas, the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Ocean State, Wali Afolabi, reveals counsels to both parties are now on the round table to forestall reoccurrence and to fine tune modalities for the inspection exercise. Yes, should conduct themselves with decorum. You know, law is a noble profession, and people that are in the profession are noble men. I spoke with a few of our colleagues on the need for us to have a round table, a meeting, all the lawyers going to inner office for the inspection. So that we are going to have a round table, we are going to discuss with ourselves and resolve all issues. If there are issues, we will look into it and resolve them. It's not good, it does not portray us in good light in this state for people to be seen it all over the world. Lawyers staging uh, in fist courts, fighting themselves and holding each other's clothes. It's not too good for us and uh, I can assure you that it will not happen again. Notwithstanding the roundtable solution, all eyes are focused on the outcome of the NBA probe. Rashid Rashid, RTV News, Oshubo. As part of efforts to crop the scourge of the deadly Ebola virus disease, the Akpapa Division of the Lagos State's branch of Nigerian Red Cross, in conjunction with a Nigerian music group, La Bugini and Claire, created awareness of the disease and distributed over 300 free hand sanitizers to residents of Nanti Village and Snake Island in the area. A motel law was at the Snake Island where the exercise took place and filed in this report. Getting set for a boat trip to Nanti Village, distance will actually not be a barrier to spread the message on the Ebola virus and of course to sensitize the people over across this water on how deadly the Ebola virus disease is and ways of preventing it. Prior to the sensitization, the residents of Nanti community have little or no knowledge of the Ebola disease and what hand sanitizers are used for. But after the sessions on hand washing exercise, lectures on Ebola and demonstrations on the use of hand sanitizers, these residents now have a different story to tell. The elementary knowledge we also have has been given to us today, so it's a nice one. After this lecture, it's like helping people giving them tutorials, making them to know that life is so much long for you to just lose in a very short while. One of the community's leaders says it would ensure the residents take to regular cleaning of the environment in order to prevent the disease. I mean, I did, the Minister of uh, Health has spoken about it at all. People are practicing for today, so we think our head is very high. The traditional head of the community advised Nigerians to emulate the artist in Red Cross Society in the campaign against Ebola. Anything it tells us to do, like washing hand and uh, wash well with uh, clean water and soap and the cream, I believe, by the grace of God, you not see something like Bola. These twin artists also lend their support to the campaign. So what we tell them that, okay, this is how you sensitize yourself, this is how you to take a proper eye. So we need more artists, you know, to, sh to show more interest and then to be particular of this project. For the organizers, the campaign to Nanti community was undertaken to address the ignorance on the part of the people, which could make them highly vulnerable to the disease. But because of the fact that the Red Cross loves people, we love protecting people's lives. So wherever people may be found, we will take pains that will cost us to make sure that we go in there for the people to have information because we believe that information is power and what people have will make sure that we, we pass information as expected 
We groom them well. Core TV didn't need a special um, phone call from the government before they came out here to support the fight of Ebola. Let everybody stand up. Lamborghini is doing it, Clay is doing it, Core TV is doing it, Red Cross is doing it, Jevenic Restaurant supported us, they are doing it, you, you are doing it, your cameraman behind there, I saw him reaching out to people, everybody is involved. That is what I feel every Nigerian should do. The call for more efforts to assist the government to win battle against the Ebola virus disease. Adding to the list of Nigerians who are aware of the Ebola virus and ways of preventing this disease, residents in the Nanti community, Snake Island, have expressed joy to what they have learned today on preventing the Ebola virus and the use of hand sanitizers. However, the message of the organizers of this program is that governments and individuals together should redouble its efforts in combating the scourge of Ebola. Omotayoalo, Core TV News, Lagos. Medical laboratory scientists want the government to update and reactivate vaccine production facilities in the country. This, they say, is necessary at a time Nigeria is working hard to contain the spread of Ebola virus disease. The laboratory scientists made their stance known at a news conference in Abuja, where they also decried the over-reliance on imported vaccines and drugs. We have the technical dexterity, we have the knowledge to produce vaccine, and we have done it before. We have our members, medical laboratory scientists, produced millions of doses of smallpox vaccine that was used in eradicating smallpox in 1978, both in Nigeria and in the West African sub-region, and we can do that again. So it's a question of creating the enabling environment we will produce these things in Nigeria. Even it is possible to produce vaccine against Ebola virus because it is the same principle. So it's a question of, in fact, it will even be more beneficial to produce in country because you'll be able to isolate the indigenous strain that is causing disease here rather than using the virus strain that is causing disease elsewhere. It's Core TV News on the hour. We'll take another break. Stay with us. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Moremi of Ife, Emoten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak. And I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Thanks for staying tuned to Core TV News on the hour. Gunmen or gunfire was heard from the area controlled by government forces in Ukraine despite rebel victories in the rest of the eastern city. Reports say the fresh violence is a big challenge to a fragile ceasefire agreed on the 5th of September. Ukrainian Prime Minister Asni Yetsenyuk has accused Russia of wanting to eliminate his country. He says Ukraine was in a stage of war with the key aggressor being Russia. Yetsenyuk says the goal of Russian President Vladimir Putin is to take the entire Ukraine, adding that NATO was the only vehicle that could protect his country. Ukraine and Western countries accuse Russia of intervening on the side of pro-Russian rebels in the eastern Ukraine. Russia has, however, denied this. Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Larov, described as nonsense reports that Russia was intent on creating a buffer zone in eastern Ukraine. Russia it says wants Ukraine to be a prosperous, neutral and friendly country. Accused the U.S. of trying to use the crisis in Ukraine to break economic ties between the EU and Russia and force people to buy U.S. gas at much higher prices. That's Core TV News for this hour, Jordan. As again, I am Gift or Gete. Good morning.